I chilled you guys out, oh, didn't I? Huh? Thank you so much. Um, it's fun to come in here with that energy. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Come in here and just, just feel that buzz, the excitement. Um, welcome to my home. I hope I've met you all either previously or just today when you came in. My name is Joe Bongiorno. This is my home in my Piano Haven recording studio. Um, this is where I live my dream as a musician, full-time, making music. Um, and a big part of it for me is helping other people produce their music. Um, and that's the recording studio part of that. Uh, people ask me all the time, Joe, how does this work? Well, the recording studio is tucked back in the corner. And my Christmas present to myself this year was to put it on wheels. So I bought a rack that's on wheels. <laughs> so it makes the concerts really easy. It's normally sitting right here in front of this window. I just go whoosh back there. Um, the cables right now are running from the microphones under the piano to the recording studio. And then they're all wide back all the way around the room into the laptop over there so we can broadcast live on the internet. So I'd like to wish a fond hello to the uh, yardstick camera right here hanging out. That's, uh, that's our internet audience. Uh, we've been broadcasting for about two years online, all these this monthly concert series. Um, and it's been a great success. We get three to 500 people tuning in worldwide uh, for these concerts. Um, so it's a pleasure to share it with you, and it's as much a pleasure to share it with our internet audience. There's a lot of people on the East Coast up late. There's people in Europe, in the UK. Um, a lot of people watching in Italy, um, and even in the Eastern Bloc, they're getting up in the middle of the night, four or five o'clock in the morning to watch these things. Um, so we do appreciate you guys on, online. Um, we're going to include the online people in the concert tonight. We're going to do a CD giveaway in-house here. We're also going to do one online for our, our, our friends out there. I'm also going to ask the online audience to email me some questions um, that you may have for any specific artists. Um, if you have a question for me, for Piano Haven, for Greg, for Kendra, um, anything you want, we're going to try and get you know at least a handful of those answers. So you can email those to pianohaven at gmail.com. <laughs> I have a little talking microphone right here. Uh, send me an email of those. Um, let us know where you are, you know, and tell us a little about yourself. Ask your question. I'm going to try and get those answered. Um, it's wonderful tonight. Uh, the two artists that are here tonight actually you know, flew considerable distances just to be here today for the concerts. We had a concert this afternoon at 3 o'clock. It was great. We had about 25 people here. Um, we've got a full house tonight. This is wonderful. Greg came from York, Pennsylvania. This is his third trip up here to play at Piano Haven. And this is Kendra's first trip. She's from a small town on the Gulf, uh, Rockport, Texas. Um, so you're going to really hear a variety of music. And what this concert series is about is, is really about exemplifies the music of whispering solo piano radio. I know a lot of you have heard of it, and probably some of you haven't. It's solopianoradio.com. Uh, it's the world's most popular solo piano internet broadcast. It's called Music to Quiet Your World. So what you're going to hear tonight is going to give you a great introduction uh, to Whisperings, or it's going to really kind of exemplify what you're used to hearing on Whisperings. It was started by David Nevue um, in 2003, um, and it's become a community of about 200 artists that work together very closely and network as a team. There's never any competition. There's no, I sell more CDs than you, I sell more downloads. Everybody works together, everybody's at a different level. Um, I've received some amazing coaching and friendship, and so, there's so many of my peers and my mentors, um, and I've been able to mentor others as well. It's just been, a, it's a wonderful balance. Um, so what you're seeing tonight is, is, is true friendship and true community, um, and true support for each other. So um, I'm going to do another song, and then we're going to change gears. Um, what am I going to play? Let's see. Right. I'm going to play. I feel like I should maybe just pick it up and do you guys a favor. Okay. I don't usually start off with the really mellow one like I did, but I was like, I was like let's see how they respond. And you guys were just like, yeah. that was cool. <laughs>
Yeah. It's called Inspired. That's uh, the opening track on Into the Wind, my new CD. And it was, um, I wrote that just a few days after I retired from my 24 year restaurant career. I was very inspired. <laughs> I was happy, can you tell? I was, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it was just a great moment of energy how that came came together. Um, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to switch gears. Um, our next performer um, is absolutely delightful, absolutely original. I just met her recently. I was doing a little mini tour down in Texas, um, and she was in the audience for one of the concerts. And I had heard of of Kendra's music um, from actually David Nevy, the founder of Whispering Solo Piano Radio, had said, you've got to hear this girl play. So we dragged her to the piano after the concert and had her, <laughs> had her do a little mini concert under pressure uh, for us. Um, and it was fantastic. And she's been uh, performing. She just finished her second CD. Um, super pleased and thrilled that she's here with us. Let's welcome Kendra Springer. Right Well, I am super excited and pleased to be here with all of you and have family here and friends and I'm just thrilled to be at Piano Haven performing with Joe and Amy and Greg. And this song, this first song I'm going to play for you is the first song off my new album which is actually just released today. And, and it's written about a place very near here called Skagit Valley. And I have family from Skagit Valley, that's where my a lot of my family comes from and I grew up listening to stories about that area and about the things that happened there and I got to visit it for the first time about <coughs> three or four years ago and it was just an amazing experience walking the places that I'd grown up hearing these stories about and seeing all the people that I had you know my grandmother's best friend comes over <laughs> when she was a girl it was amazing so I wrote this song called Skagit Valley and the song is about the valley, but it's also just about the celebration of family and roots and the places that we come from.
The next song I'm going to play for you is called Hint of Dawn, and it's from my first album, Hope. And when I wrote this song, or actually when I started the album, I was thinking, oh, Hope, what a great, you know, what a great concept, what a great thing to write about. But I didn't realize that I was going to actually have to experience living out what Hope was. And through the course of this album, it took about a year to write the songs and record I had to realize that hope isn't just this wonderful feeling we get. It's a choice we make about how we live our lives. And even when it's dark and our lives are really dark, there's we can choose to see that light that's just beginning. Thank you. Well, like Joe said, I'm from Texas, and Texas is a little different than Washington. <laughs> it's kind of rough and hot, and this next song I wrote is about the Southwest. And the thing about the Southwest is it's so diverse. There's so many, well, you know, our whole country's that way, but the Southwest especially, there's so many cultures that come together there. The influence from Mexico, the Indians, the, all the pioneers that came in. And I, we took a road trip last year through uh, a lot of Texas, including the West, West Texas, and we were driving down the road, and the sun was just beating down. I mean, you step out of the car and the pavement's just like heat wave coming up, heat wave coming down. It's so hot and it's just this flat, barren land with cactus. And I'm just driving along and I, I can just see in my mind's eye the Texas Rangers and the cowboys and the Indians and Zorro out there riding along. <laughs> and I just have all these images yeah. going through my mind and the senoritas playing guitars. And I just... It's so exciting, all the history that's there, and I, th I wanted to capture that with a song. So I see all these, you know, road signs going by, all these gorgeous names, San Angelo, uh, um, all these beautiful sounding names, and I saw a town called Sonora, and that, that name really caught me. I thought, I'm going to write a song about that. So this is Sonora. This is celebrating the West.
How's that for something different, huh? All right, very cool. Yeah, it's nice to hear it. It's very refreshing. Um, our next performer uh, from York, Pennsylvania. Um, he, uh, he's just, again, he's just one of these guys that has such a definable sound. He's just unique. Um, it's refreshing, it's floating. You're gonna feel like you're on air. You know, so if you start levitating, just hang on to your chair. <laughs> but, um, uh, let's give a warm welcome to my great friend and fantastic composer from York, Pennsylvania. This is Greg Maroney.
That song is uh, called The Journey. <laughs> it does take you on a, <laughs> take you on a journey. Um, and it's a title track to uh, one of the CDs I have back there. So uh, awesome. thank you very much. I'm Greg Maroney, and I do live in Pennsylvania. Um, this, that song actually was recorded here uh, probably about a year and a half ago or so. Uh, kind of uh, serendipitously, um, a question came in in the concert earlier, um, is how did this, that song get recorded here when I live in Pennsylvania? And I had come out to do uh, some other recordings on this uh, piano because it's such a beautiful piano and this is a great environment to study, in, uh, to um, record, and Joe does a good job as an engineer, great job. And uh, the sound is a wonderful sound. So I was looking for that. And we were doing some other material and uh, I had an extra day kind of built in just to mess around a little bit. And Joe and I was here with Wayne Gratz. Um, uh, we were doing some other work, and uh, they left. And I was left here with the piano, and uh, he just turned his computer on. That's actually over there now. Uh, and uh, I went to it, and I recorded the whole album, probably in about six to eight hours of the, the whole album, The Journey. I was ready for it. I, was, I had done a lot of work prep uh, you know, to get to this point. Um, but so I just sat down all by myself and just poured everything into this piano and got the whole album done. Right uh, so that was kind of why I, I was here and used this piano. So it's kind of a neat story. Uh, the next song I'm going to play is um, Before I Forget. Uh, and uh, <laughs> that is the name of the song. Actually, it was written uh, uh, and titled from uh, we're having uh, my wife's parents, we're building an addition, and uh, her mother is suffering from Alzheimer's. And uh, so they're going to move into this addition that we built, and we'll take care of them. In my other life, I'm also an RN, so uh, that should be kind of uh, fit into the whole thing, and it seems like the right thing to do. So uh, we're going to uh, have them move in, but in the meantime, we're building this huge addition to our house, and they had the big uh, excavator in there, dug a big, huge hole in our backyard. It was like, I was going, I lost my sunroom. So there's a few sacrifices in this, but... In the long run, I think it'll be uh, take care of them. So uh, this is a song. For me.
you very much. Uh, one more song for the set, and this is titled Breathe.
That song uh, is called Once a Child, and that's um, on my 2007 CD, Summer Within. And I wrote that. The inspiration behind that was my teenage daughter at the time. She was 15, and she was spending the night here, and she was wrapped up in her blankets. I peeked into her room, you know, it's daddy, I don't care if you're two or 15, I'm gonna just peek in there, you know, and see how you're doing, and I saw her. And she would just had herself completely wrapped in blankets all the way around her head, and just her face was sticking out. <laughs> <laughs> and it looked exact, I, and her face in the darkness looked exactly as it did when she was first born and wrapped in the blankets and in my arm. And I saw that that night, and I went straight to the piano, and I was just plunking out this super simple one note melody, and I'm once a child. She was once a child. She's now she's almost 21 and wow. flap, <laughs> flapping her wings beautifully. So I'm going to do one more song, and that is going to be... Doo -doo 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 -doo. A surprise. Yeah, it's always a surprise. What are we going to do? <laughs> I think I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stick with my daughter. There you go. Play it safe. This is, um, this is called Hand in Hand, and this is off the Mesmerized CD from 2009. And I learned the best way to understand and get to know my teenage daughter was just say, hey, let's go for a walk. And it wasn't usually more than about 25 steps. And she would just start blabbing away you know, about everything in her life. And it was wonderful. And I learned the hard lesson of biting this thing. Yeah. And just listen. I had the answers, but it didn't matter. And if I did say them, she didn't want to hear them from Dad. But I would sit there and I would watch her. Good for you. I'd watch her figure it out. You know, and just in, in her processing, she would actually figure it out. You know, and I would just listen, and I would ask strategic questions. <laughs> you all know how that works, don't you? So. Anyway, this is uh, Taylor and I walking around St. Edward's Park right up the road.
gonna switch up in a second. Um, I've had a lot of ask, people ask me about the piano. This piano, my dream piano, surprise, surprise. Um, this is a Kawai model, it's made in Japan. Um, and it's an RX-7, it's their semi-concert grand. And I first fell in love with this piano when I played at my friend Joe Yamada's house. I know a number of you are familiar with him. He's also a Whisperings artist, lives over in Linwood. And I recorded my uh, Destined album in 2004 on his album, on his piano. Um, fell in love with it so much, I set my goal to get my own. Three years later, I got my own. Um, I'd like to <laughs> nudge that. I saw that. Other people, I know there's a lot of other people who uh, aspire for, this, for the piano. Um, and there's just something pristinely clear and full about this piano that when I played it at his place, and then I found this one. It took me two years to find, find the right one. Um, I was actually down in Portland. Um, wonderful store, classic pianos down there. They hooked me up. They locked me in a room for four hours and let me play um, as long as I wanted and, and made me a deal I couldn't pass up, and I wrote the biggest check of my life. That was cool. <laughs> um, Kawhi Pianos has been wonderful to me. Um, always love to give them a plug. Um, I, I truly believe in them as people and as a family um, and as just manufacturers of impeccable pianos of all sizes. So I love the guys at Kawhi. Thank you, Kawhi. So we're going to switch gears. Um, let's uh, get Kendra back up here for a couple more songs. Kendra. <laughs> a delightful evening. <laughs> um, the next song I'm going to play is called Kathleen's Lullaby and it's on my new album. I wrote this song for my cousin. She more recently has become a new mother. Actually now she has two but <laughs> when, I, when I first started writing this song she had just become a new mother and I asked her to tell me a little bit about what it was like for her becoming a mother. And she wrote me this beautiful, beautiful letter and just shared with me some of the fears and the joys that she was experiencing as she was holding that tiny little baby in her arms, thinking about the future and planning for him. And, of course, I followed all her Facebook postings about staying up all night and <laughs> the, the crying and the, all the things that come along with a new baby. And I wrote this song for her.
Okay, Kendra in Texas writes and asks, Melinda. what... Direct Kendra, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Melinda. <laughs> what song was the easiest or quickest for you to compose and why? Well, that would definitely have to be Angela, a song I wrote for my aunt for her birthday. And I, that was, the, usually songwriting is a long process for me, but that song, I just sat down and wrote it in about 10 minutes, so. Wow. <laughs> awesome. Oh, thank you, and hello to all the internet audience out there. All right, this last song I'm going to play for you is a German word, which I'm hesitant to pronounce because I don't speak German, <laughs> but <Awkward>. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to give it my best shot. Gerete. And it means saved. A friend of mine who is a photographer, he specializes in horse photography, he fantastic, does a fantastic job. He has a debilitating disease that's very painful and he tried to use a medication and it just totally was not working. It was just putting him in depression and so he began to use his photography as his therapy and working with horses. And he asked me to use some of my music for his photos when he was doing slideshows for uh, showcases and on YouTube. And I said, absolutely. Um, if I was gonna write a song for you, what would you like it to be called? And so he said, you have saved me. Mm. And I thought, that's nice, but it's kind of a long title. So I just made it Gerete, because he's German, from Germany. And this song I'm going to play for you, see if you can hear the horses and hear them running through the fields. When I was writing it, I asked my sister, what, what does horses running through fields sound like? And I was kind of playing along. And she said, oh, that sounds good, but you need to put some bass notes in. That, that'll, that'll get it. <laughs> okay, so, so I did.
a couple more. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, someone asked, actually, I forgot to say this in the beginning, of why do I play without shoes on? Uh, and that was an internet question as well. Uh, somebody from my hometown, uh, York, uh, Pennsylvania. Um, and I play because you feather the pedal a little bit, and there's different shades of the pedal that you can push uh, to get different sustain. And so I do it that way. But I don't really wear shoes anyway. <laughs> so it's uh, uh, sort of a natural state of, uh, <laughs> of me. My wife is even worse than I am. She does not wear shoes. <clears throat> Until I make her wear shoes. If we're doing construction around the house or something, she like, go put those shoes on. <laughs> we haven't got tetanus yet either. Uh, <laughs> fortunately. Uh, I'm going to play two, uh, two uh, well, actually one's recorded, but two brand new songs. Uh, they're just within the last month or two. Um, this will be for an album that I'm currently working on now. I don't know its title, um, but I, the songs kind of have a name. The first one um, is uh, a song about, we have a little seven-acre farmette kind of in uh, um, south-central Pennsylvania. And every year, I uh, buy a big bag of Narcissus bulbs, and I plant them around. And so I've done that for 15 years or so. And so everywhere you go, you know, there's little pockets of Narcissus bulbs that, uh, or flowers that come up. Um, and about this time, although they're a little early this year because it's been so warm. And um, so the other day, I was out, well, when the song started, I was out walking around in my kind of the back couple acres, and uh, there was all these narcissus plants out there. So I was thinking, do you remember Tiny Tim, you know, tiptoeing through the tulips? <laughs> For some reason, he was in my mind, and I was tip I don't know why that was, but I was uh, tiptoeing through the narcissus. <laughs> but uh, here's a song about tiptoeing through the narcissus.
see walking through the tomb. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not a real complex song. It's actually my favorite song now that uh, uh, I've kind of got it down. But it's not super complex. It's just. <laughs> All right, last song. Uh, this is a love song, and I think it's going to be called "I'll Always Love You." For my wife. In case you keep watching this, I think the podcast is cut off on the internet. Not only that, but it's. I think it's almost nine. It'd be midnight there. Yeah. So <laughs> you'd probably be asleep. I should be asleep too. <laughs> I haven't quite adjusted this time.
We got a little something left for you. Right. <laughs> got a little something left for you. Uh, real quick question. Um, Larry in Seattle asks, I can't even read my own handwriting. I'm back there writing in the dark. Ooh. <laughs> what all is involved in making and maintaining a wonderful piano sound? Well, it's <laughs> a lot of freaking money is what it is. Um, <laughs> You know, and a darn good piano tech. That's really the thing. Um, uh, <laughs> I mean, I go through, we, we do a lot of work on this thing. You know, when I first got it, I knew the sound that I wanted. I'd heard it on another Quiet or RX-7. And I had a number of techs come through here, couldn't quite get it to where that one was. And then I hired the most expensive Steinway tech who did the Seattle Symphony pianos. Is you know, $175 to walk in your door, you know. <laughs> yeah. Not to mention the hourly rate. But he spent a few hours with it, and he got it, and he's been maintaining it. I also have a wonderful yeah. local tuner lives right up the street, and he's a great yeah. tuner, and he pops down here, you know, all the time. Just He runs through it and just makes it perfect. Yeah. I mean, I could easily have it done once a week because, you know, if there's a little note that pops out. And then there's voicing. And what voicing is is the hammers, it's a felt hammer, a felt-tipped hammer that hits the string and makes the vibration. Right. Well, that hammer can be textured. If that hammer is really hard, it's going to be a bright, pingy sound. If that hammer is really soft, it's going to be a warm, muted sound. So what they do is they go through and they take all 88 of those hammers and they spend time on each one getting the perfect sound for that note. And it's incredibly time-consuming and it's incredibly skilled. These guys have amazing ears. What they do is they'll needle the hammers to soften them up if it's too bright. They actually have a big stick with a needle on the end and they just keep poking it and then they hit it and they wait and, and what it does is it just breaks the fibers and it stretches the fibers so that it, it's a little softer and what they'll do to make it brighter is they'll sand the felt down to take the soft top off the stuff because the felt, felt is about that thick and it's more dense towards the bottom That's where it's wrapped so they wow. That's so, cool. so they'll sand it down and if you want it really bright like an Elton John piano they'll actually <laughs> they'll actually put a little bit of lacquer paint lacquer on the tip of the hammer so when you hit it you get this ping um, and some some a lot of the old pianos like you hear those saloon piano sounds they take thumbtacks metal thumbtacks and it's called a tack piano and you get this crazy loud super bright but to cut through a saloon it works great and that's where you kind of hear that sound so uh, good question Larry thanks for asking that how do you have a wrench here then that's a good question. Oh, I just touch it up. I came out here during the intermission just to check the tuning. I'll do a little tuning adjustments myself. I can't tune a whole piano, you know, but if a note pops out and I hear it just the slightest bit, I can isolate the string because each note has three strings. So I isolate the one that is out by muting any one of the three. And if I mute one and then it sounds in tune, I know the one I muted is the one out of tune. So I'll just kind of jockey it back and forth. Awesome. Oh, <laughs> Take some work. But, um... I'm not a piano tech.